When the coronavirus first took off, then Secretary of State Mike Pompeo immediately suspected that the virus may have come from a Wuhan lab instead of a wet market. The medical community, Democrats, and the media wrote him off as a kook. They didn't accept what we said, the data set that we laid out before them, because they played politics. They had a, they had a theory of the case that was based on this was Mike Pompeo saying this. And he works in the Trump administration, and therefore, there's some other angle here. They're trying to, you know, it's a shiny object theory or whatever it is. Now that it appears his suspicions have merit and that controversial gain of function research supported by the U.S. may have also played a part, Pompeo tells us how bureaucrats kept putting up roadblocks as he tried to get to the truth. Inside the State Department, there was lots of debate about the efforts we had underway, but I was just, uh, uh, vicious about demanding that the team do everything they can to sort fact from fiction. If it leads to a conclusion that's not the one that we, we think it is, great. We just want to get to the conclusion. Yeah. And so, but there was enormous resistance. We, we ran over the resistance as best we could, both from inside the State Department and from uh, at NIH and other places, people who didn't want to talk about the fact that there had been grants to the uh, WIV. While that was then, the former secretary hasn't stopped trying to right wrongs. That includes tackling issues like the assault on religious freedom here at home. We saw it during the virus, churches that couldn't gather, pastors that couldn't bring their flock to a place while you had all kinds of other craziness going on, protests in the streets that were acceptable. That is a, a real black mark on religious freedom in America. It's deeply inconsistent with our constitutional right mm -hmm. uh, to, for the free exercise of religion, but more importantly, it strikes at the very moral foundation of our country. Pompeo says a spiritual battle is striking the moral foundation as well. There's a lot of folks that believe we are in a state right now in America of spiritual warfare, if you will. There's no doubt there are folks here in the United States that are uh, trying to place evil in front of us. Mm -hmm. This isn't new for those of us who are Christian, those of us who are uh, believers in right. the Bible. Uh, we know that evil always exists. Uh, we also know that we're all sinners, but we, we know this. We, we have to be strong in our faith. That strong faith would likely play a role in a potential future decision whether he might run for president. Look, you, you've, you've met with some donors, uh, you're, you, you've been in some states, oh, I don't know, New Hampshire and a couple others. You know, hello, you know, I didn't fall off the turnip truck <laughs> yesterday, uh, so I cover this stuff for a living. Uh, how serious are you about potentially running in 2024? So it's a, a fair question. Uh, mm -hmm. I must say, Susan and I pray every day about how sure. to execute the mission we've been given um, by the Lord. We're going to stay in this fight. I've been at this for decades. Mm -hmm. Today, 2022 is the marker. Whoever the president is in 2024 needs to have a Senate and the House so that they can actually make the changes that America needs. So it's safe to say that you're surveying the terrain and you'll see what happens after 2022. Is that, is that a fair, is that fake news or not fake it, news? It, it, it is fair to say we're going to stay in the fight. We'll see what role, what role the, the Lord brings to us. David Brody, CBN News.